Ooh. Hi-Fi Man HE6SEV2. They're good. They're good. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Mr. Eret, and this is going to be a review of the HE6SEV2. Um, my new front runner. Okay. Let's dig into this headphone and I will tell you um, why I enjoy it so much, what I'm driving it with, and I'll give you some comparisons to some other similarly priced and higher priced uh, headphones that I've got on hand right now. So let's take a look. All right, uh, before we talk about anything else, let's just get this out of the way. This cable is like, Man, it's a weird cable. Um, just this kind of like loose surgical tubing. It's just, it's just not nice. Um, you know, I think it, it, it does, it's XLR, right? Four pin XLR is what it comes with. And then you get a little XLR to quarter inch adapter, which, you know, is a bit cumbersome to use, but I appreciate that it's even in there, I guess. Um, I know that in their materials, Hi-Fi Men talks about like the cable, they wanted it to be, you know, not microphonic and maybe that's why they chose that material, but it just is a weird choice that doesn't feel good to use. Um, the build on the headphones though, uh, I mean, it's pretty standard Hi-Fi Men, like it's, it's literally like exactly the same as the, you know what, hold on a second, let me go get the, the 400 SE and you can just see them side by side. Okay, so take a look at this, right? Now, obviously I've got the grill covers off of the HE6. I mean, and there are different magnet structures and things like that, and you can just tell heft-wise the weight of the HE6 is, is significantly more than the 400 SE down here, okay? Um, but build-wise, I mean, if you're looking at them, I mean, they are just the same. I mean, just in, in every uh, aspect, as far as I can tell, outside of the driver's structure, they are um, exactly the same. And, you know, that it's, it's not a terrible build, um, but the thing is, is like, this it is listed on Adorama for like $1,700. Um, now, You'd be a little crazy to pay that price because they go on sale regularly if you get on Adorama's email list for like 600 bucks, which is what I bought mine for. And it's $600, I'm like, okay, it's fine. I, I mean, it's a little frustrating to me that like their $100 headphones have the same build quality. Um, but you know, it's okay. But like, if you paid $1,700 for these things, like number one, I'm sorry. And number two, like, boy hi-fi man shame on you for trying to sell a build a headphone of this build quality for that price um shouldn't be doing that um if you're gonna charge 1700 dollars for it or even list it for that at all you know throw some quality materials our way right but anyway you're forgiven because uh the sound okay we'll get to that in a moment here uh, comfort on these, I'm not a huge fan of this padded head headband style. Um, it's, I mean, it's fine, but because these headphones are a little bit on the heavy side, like I do feel like I get a hot spot here. Um, the pads are fine. I don't have any problem with them, really. I mean, I know you can pad roll and stuff on these, and I do have the, the aftermarket rings, um, so I can try some different stuff. I haven't gotten around to that. Probably a future video. We'll talk about that stuff. Um, Outside of that build, yeah, I mean, plastic, metal yokes, I mean, it, it's okay. It's okay, right? Um, I have the grills off, obviously. Uh, why? Uh, you read online, you read about these, they talk about, like, if you open, up, open them up a little bit, you can get a little bit more soundstage, you can get... Um, maybe a little more bass response, so... I. I think that's probably true. I mean, I haven't listened to them a whole lot with the grills on. I kind of just took them off and just have been too lazy to be snapping them back and forth to, to try it. But that's just because I'm like, I'm so pleased with the sound. So let's just, let's just go ahead and talk about sound, right? Um, these are extremely, extremely transparent headphones. I mean, and when I say transparent, like I know that's kind of like an audiophile buzzword um let me tell you what that means to me uh it means i feel like when i'm using the he6 
And I did most of my listing through the uh, Bifrost 2 and the Singler SA1. We'll talk more about amp amplification here in just a, a little bit. I feel like I am like just hearing the music. I don't, it doesn't seem to me like like the HE6 is like coloring things or, or altering it or putting something forward of something else. I mean, I am just, I am just in it and I am just, I just feel like I am in the room, you know? I don't feel like vocals are pushed towards me or that they're put back. I feel like it's just like wherever they are, wherever they were in the room or in the mix, like that's where I hear them, you know? Um, I feel like there there can be like some harshness and stuff in these, but I don't like I don't fault the headphones for that at all. I'm going, man, that was the recording. Like they didn't do a very good job on that. Um, I just you hear every minute little detail, and it the the, the that combined their speed, the resolution of all that. It just like, you can just hear the leading edges come in and you can hear the decays go and man, it is just so detailed and so addicting um, when you're listening like that. Now it does maybe, it's, it's different. It's not, I mean, not many headphones that I've listened to can, can do this really, none to the extent of this. And it's not like an in your face, headphone I don't feel like but it's you have to kind of sit down and pay attention type of a headphone right like it's it you just you there's so much going on that you just that's all you want to do you don't want to do anything else you just want to sit and you want to listen and you want to just I don't know uh how I kind of equate it is I was the I have a set of OG clears on hand that um that were sent to me by by a, a friend of mine and you know, I was comparing them and I feel like the clears are, they're good. I mean, technically they're really good um, and on par detail wise and stuff with the HE6, but I feel like it's a more traditional headphone presentation where, you know, it's a lot of right and left and, um, you know, you're, you're hearing everything that's there, but it just, it's not like you're there. It's more like you're looking at like a really good photograph of a landscape right? Like if a really good photograph would capture the mood, it would capture, you know, all the details, but it doesn't feel like you're there, you know? And with the HE6, the way I th thought about it is if you have them on and you, it, it's like somebody's that same landscape, if we use that same analogy, think about somebody like telling you to close your eyes and then they start describing to you what it was like to be there you know feel the sun on your skin you hear the wind blowing through you know the pine trees and you feel you know some of the leaves crunch under your feet as you take a step you know you take a breath and you you smell you know the fresh earth and in the you know sweet decay of, of some of the leaves it's fall that's why I talk about leaves a lot but you know just it's like if you and if you take a moment and you concentrate and you use your imagination like then you're there you know and that for me is like the he6 it, it just it puts me there um and man i just i love it i love it so let me just go through go through some of the frequency response and give you my impressions but again transparency is is the word here and I think let's start down low, like really low. Normally, like I didn't know I liked sub bass until I got this headphone and then I heard it and I heard some super clean sub bass and it had like a presence, like an all, like a filling the music presence to it. And wow, that's, that's something. And that's um, something that I had missed with pretty much any other headphones that I've used. Like maybe I've listened to headphones that had sub bass, but not, not presented in such a natural way, um, the way the AT6 does. And then, so for regular bass impact, you know, when you get to like the mid bass and stuff like that, I don't, it's definitely not the hardest hitting headphone in the world. Although, you know, people, people have different experiences depending on what kind of amps you're running with this. I'm running the Singzer, it's got plenty of power. I think it runs this beautifully compared to anything else I tried with it. Even I had like the Jotunheim 2 and Lake People G, 
111 that I tried with this, but I didn't really like this headphone with those. With the, with the Singer, it just it all clicked. Um, and if you go check out my review of the Singer, I kind of gush um, about it and about these headphones in that review. Um, but you know, some people say speaker amp, and you can get you know some some really impactful bass now. I haven't had the the right connections and stuff to make that happen yet. I'm working on it, so we'll. I'm kind of DIYing it, but we'll see um, in the future. Again, I'll probably do an update down the road with this headphone. But I, I think the bass it's well controlled. It sounds super natural. It's not emphasized. It's not too little. It's not bloated. It's just it's just boom. It just sounds great. It's not like super textured like the clears definitely have more impact with the bass and they definitely have more texture to it but it loses a little bit of the naturalness that like the he6 has the you get up into the mids and i feel like compared to some headphones the he6 can sound like a little thin and maybe a little hollow if you're just switching right over to them but then i think you you take a moment and like you adjust and then you kind of get it and you hear that no it's it's not that the mids are lacking or that they're thin it's just that now you're hearing like the recording and the space and all of that that goes with it as opposed to just having the mids presented to you you're hearing the 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 mids and like the vocals and things like in the context of the recording and again it just it just sounds the way it should it just sounds like you're there it sounds so natural the um i mean in the in the voices they just have texture to them and they have detail and they have sparkle and they need to have sparkle and you can just hear the emotions and just mm, just mm, they just it's just great uh you get up to the highs and um i think same thing right it's just extremely clean highs not over sharpened, not rolled back, just clean and pure and and just it sounds the way it should. And wow, just having it all across the board like that, man, is it an engaging listen. And I am just I am just loving it. And I think especially now that I've I've had the opportunity to hear a few higher end headphones okay so i've got an aeolus with me here i've got the og clears which both are you know significantly more than the he6 i think this is maybe one of the one of the first headphones or pieces of gear where i feel like i can sit here and i can confidently say like that this thing is a great great value right like i feel like the technicalities with this headphone are easily on par with the Aeolus and the Clears. I feel like this, I, I, I think overall, I like this headphone better than either of those two headphones. Now, um, the Clears were loaned to me, um, so that'll be a, a separate review. The Aeolus I bought, and I'll probably keep those in addition to the HE6, just because they're easy to drive and they sound really good off my XCAN portable setup. So, um, that's so let's talk about amping here real quick um and and what i want to say is like it is definitely true that the he6 needs the proper amp um to get you where you want to be with it and that might require a little bit of experimentation just because your amp has a lot of power doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna make the he6 shine as i experienced with like specifically the jotunheim 2. um so I, it's as far as if you're recommending a headphone to somebody or if I'm recommending a headphone, right, you have to really know what you're getting into with the HE6 in that it's a special headphone, but you might have to you might have to play around with some gear too to find it. Whereas I feel like both something like the Clears or the Aeolus, like you can pretty much toss those on anything and they sound really, really good. Um, which is not necessarily the case with the HE6. Again, it didn't sound like terrible with the the Jot 2 or the G111, but like it just didn't. It I was listening to it going back and forth from some other stuff, you know, the Edition XX, um, the HE 560, uh, you know, just other things that I kind of had on hand, and I just I was like, ah, you know, it's it's okay. But then, like I said, I, I got the Singer and it was like, boom, nailed it. 
and I was like, wow, this is special. So all this to say, um, the HE6, is it worth 600 bucks? Thousand percent, it's worth 600 bucks. Um, if you've got a nice desktop setup or you don't mind you know, invest in a little bit more to try out some speaker amps maybe or try out a couple of different, you know, desktop amps to see where it puts you. If you've got a good source like the Bifrost 2 that I'm I'm running it from. Um, not that it wouldn't sound okay on the lesser gear, but again, this is a situation where it's going to scale if you find the right synergies to, to go with it. Um, and that's true of, of most headphones, I would say, but I mean this one I, I would say more so than many of the other ones that I've tried like this needs that kind of a uh, attention to to the synergy and to the rest of the chain is to get it where it needs to be at least that's how it was for me okay so 600 bucks yeah definitely I love it um, if you've got the gear to drive it or you're willing to invest in some other gear to drive it definitely would I use this? Is this like an, an go everywhere, do everything type of a headphone? I don't think so. Um, it's heavy, you know, uh, it, it's not something that you can just like plug into like a PS5 controller and use or even like a portable amp and things like that. So, so I think this is like an exclusively at your desk type of headphone, you know, where you are in a quiet setting because I mean, it's, I mean, it's right through, like it's totally open. So all that stuff factoring in, if, if that suits you, this is 100% worth a try. Um, absolutely. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for the HE6. Again, just loving this headphone. So I, I'll, I'll be doing some more stuff with this, right? Like I, I need to get some, you know, a grill cover made. Um, and, and there's all sorts of different mods, you know, new headbands and... Um, different pad rolling and stuff like that. So I'll be I'll be playing around a little bit more with the HE6. You know, hopefully I can get my speaker amp adapter thing kind of DIY and set up. And um, so yeah, if you got one, you know, and you're loving it, and you want to know like what else can be done with it, I'll, I'll probably be doing some of that content. If you got questions, comments, any of that other stuff, you know, definitely drop that down below. You know, what other amps are you using your HE6 with if you've got one? And, and what have you found is a good match, bad match? Um, that all be useful information that I think people would people would enjoy, um, you know, learning about. Um, I'll also be, you know, those other headphones I mentioned, uh, those reviews will be coming up as well. And yeah, I think that's, I think that's going to do it today. As always, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you for staying with me. And, you know, I'll, I'll see you in the next one.